How's it going, folks? I'm Des with DesFit, and this is the Whoop 4.0, and this is one of the more interesting devices when it comes to sports tech wearables. It doesn't have a display, it doesn't have GPS, it doesn't track your floors climbed, it doesn't have any smartwatch features to speak of, and you can't even tell the time with it. So what exactly does this thing do? Well, for the hardware, it has an optical heart rate sensor along with a few other sensors like an SpO2 sensor and a temperature sensor, but that's really all about it in terms of the hardware. The Whoop 4.0 is more about all the data that it collects, and you can kind of think about it as a health tracker that's focused on tracking how much effort you put out during your workouts, the quality of the recovery that you get, as well as how ready you are for your next workout and how intense that should be. It collects a lot of data for these metrics, and they simplify and present this data to you with kind of two main concepts. Strain, which is the amount of effort you put out in regards to heart rate, and then recovery, which is based on multiple factors, including heart rate variability and sleep. Another unique thing about Whoop is how you actually pay for it. So you're not necessarily purchasing a device, you're actually signing up for a subscription, and then you'll get the device with that subscription. So how much you'll pay for Whoop basically comes down to how long you want to commit to them. So the pricing, it's a bit complicated, but it's certainly something that you need to consider with Whoop. So I've been testing the Whoop 4.0 out for quite some time, and I've got lots of data to share, including what I think of Whoop's concept of strain recovery how that data collected compares to how I actually felt in real life. And I've also got lots of examples in terms of sensor accuracy since all that training and recovery feedback is based on the hardware. So if the hardware isn't good, then that feedback could be meaningless. In addition, I'll also be going over some of the issues I've had with it over the course of my testing, as well as how Whoop support team handled those issues. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not I think the data that collects is actually worth the price. And as always, if you find the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel out quite a bit, and I appreciate it. So for the hardware, the Whoop 4.0 is essentially a little strap with a little pod that has a heart rate sensor along with some additional sensors to track your health metrics 24 hours a day. The heart rate sensor is an upgraded version from the previous generation Whoop 3.0, which has basically more LEDs and is supposed to be more accurate. More details on accuracy later in the video. The Whoop 4.0 also has an SpO2 sensor for tracking blood oxygen saturation levels. It also can track your respiration rate and also has a temperature sensor which aids in better sleep tracking. If you give it a little double tap, you'll be able to see your general battery life remaining, which is basically four different ranges indicated by different colors, but you can also check your exact battery percentage in the Whoop app. And then another trick with the hardware is that it does have a haptic vibration, and that vibration can be used as an alarm to wake you up, and also can alert you when you reach your optimal strain level for the day. It comes to you ready to wear on the wrist with a nice, soft, comfortable strap, and you basically just slip it on, adjust the length of the strap as needed, and then just close the strap. They designed this to be a comfortable, unobtrusive little device that's just quietly collecting your health data in the background all day long. And I think that's sort of the beauty with it, that it's minimalistic and you kind of just kind of forget that you're wearing it. It's primarily designed to be worn on the wrist, but this pod is detachable and they make a bunch of accessories where you can wear the 4.0 on other areas of your body. Whoop advertises a battery life of up to five days in the pod itself. Realistically, I'm getting more like three to three and a half days out of it. Now, initially I was only getting like a day to day and a half out of it, but I contacted their support department they had me run through a few different procedures, and then we eventually found a solution that extended the battery life, not up to five days, but to three to three and a half days, which seems to be what most people are getting. So if you are experiencing really low battery life, just contact their support department. They should be able to help you out. They didn't know I was a reviewer or anything like that. I just went through normal support channels, so kudos to them on that. And then to charge the Whoop 4.0, they have this cleverly little designed battery pack that they include that just slides onto the strap. It's rather slick, and what's nice about this pack too is that you don't have to take off the strap itself. You can just click it on whenever you need to charge it, and the battery pack is IP68 water resistant, so you can still shower with it and not have to worry. The battery pack itself charges via USB-C, and they include this cute but quite robust little charging cable. However, one of the issues that I've had with this battery pack, and actually still have till this day, is that the battery pack doesn't maintain charging all the way to 100%. So what happens here is that maybe after 20 or 30 minutes, it just stops charging, and what I have to do is unclip the pack, reattach it, and then it just starts charging again. So I have to reclip it maybe like two or three times during the charging process to get a full 100% charge. Now, Whoop did send out an additional battery pack as a replacement, which was nice, but I experienced the same issue with the second battery pack, and I also did make sure to update the battery pack firmware. It's not a huge deal, but it is kind of annoying. So the device is one thing, but what Whoop really is known for is all the data that's collected, which is used to provide some interesting insights into the effort that you exert in your workouts and your daily routines, as well as your recovery from all that. And they do a pretty good job of presenting this data in a simplified way on a high level, and you'll see all this data in their smartphone app. 
So I'm first gonna go through an example of a few nights and days with Whoop to kind of give you a general idea of the concepts of strain and recovery. But the other thing about Whoop is that to benefit from it more, you actually need to use it for a longer term. And this is where you're gonna get some pretty interesting insights. So I'll have some of that data to share as well. So let's actually start at one of the end of my days with Whoop because it kind of has quite a few things we can look at. And then we'll move on to the next morning and the next day. So I recorded this around 10 p.m. before I went to bed. So up here, it shows two circles. The inner circle is my recovery score from the night before. That score is based on a scale of zero to 100. As you can tell, it's not a great recovery score. The outer circle that you see in blue is the strain that I've accumulated in that day. Strain is based on a scale of zero to 21, where recovery is based on a scale of zero to 100. Why 21 for strain? You got me. And then below that, it shows my HRV in gray and then my current daily calories burned on the right. So below that, we have a few different buttons here, but I first wanna show you the sleep data from the night before, as well as the two activities I did that day. So if we tap on sleep, it shows a graph of my heart rate throughout the night, the time I spent in bed, and it also shows the average time I spent in bed based on the last 30 days. And then it also tracks your sleep stages throughout the night, a nice graph of disturbances throughout the night, your sleep efficiency, which is the amount of time I actually got versus the time I actually spent in bed. And then it also tracks your respiratory rate along with the average over the last 30 days. And we'll loop back to the recovery on the next morning after we take a look at this workout data. So here's an indoor cycling workout which shows a graph of your heart rate during the workout. And don't worry, we'll dive deep into the heart rate accuracy later in the video. And then below that, it gives an estimation of calories burned, average heart rate, max heart rate, and duration. And then here's the running workout that I did later that day with similar types of data. Now here's what's kind of neat about the Whoop 4.0 is that it's just automatically tracking your strain throughout your entire day without you needing to do anything because it's always tracking your heart rate, which is what strain is based off of. So those activities that you saw right there, I didn't manually start or stop those activities or anything like that. It was actually able to automatically detect those and it does a pretty good job at the automatic detection for the most part. So what happens is that you can just do your workout and then when you're done, after your heart rate is lowered, up pops this notification that it detected an activity. It can kind of range in terms of how long it takes for that notification to show up, but it can take anywhere from like 10 minutes all the way up to 40 minutes I've found. And then what you can do from here is that if for some reason the workout time was a little bit off, you can actually press the edit button and this allows you to adjust the actual time that you were working out. And then from here, you can also enter some more details like where you wore your whoop, and then you can also choose the activity type it was. And you can also enter some personal feedback like what you thought of your perceived exertion, your performance level, and if you're able to complete your workout. And then in terms of the accuracy of the actual workout time, so here is the activity that I was manually tracking on the Garmin Epics, and I did in fact start it right at 529, so it nailed that. And I worked out for 47 and a half minutes, so on this workout, it nailed it in terms of my workout time. And then sometimes it's actually even able to automatically detect detect the type of workout that you do. So like here, it was actually able to detect that I was mountain biking. And then here's an example where it was able to detect that I was running. Pretty good stuff. On a few occasions though, for some reason or another, even though I had an elevated heart rate and did a workout, the automatic detection didn't really recognize and I never got a notification. Like you can see here, from 3 p.m. to about 4.15 or so, I did an indoor cycling workout, but it didn't register. The nice thing though is that you can still log this as an individual activity if you'd like by just pressing this button right here and you can classify it with the start and end times and all that good stuff. Now you can always also manually track an activity if you'd like by pressing this button right here that says start an activity and up pops the screen that shows your heart rate right there in the center along with a few other options. Up top here on this drop down menu, here's where you can choose an activity type. And what's interesting here is that it's not just workouts that you can track, you can also track activities that involve recovery as well as sleep. So once you choose your activity type, there's also this toggle right here where if you're bringing your phone with you on your outdoor workout, you can track your route using your phone's GPS. The Whoop 4.0 doesn't have GPS, so if you want location data, you'll have to use this feature. And then there's also this toggle down here that says strain coach. And notice over here that it has 11.7. That 11.7 figure is what Whoop recommends as the optimal amount of strain I should endure based on my recovery as well as the rest of the activities I've already done that day. And then when you press start, up pops the screen which shows the amount of strain endured so far in your activity, a little indicator right here that shows the optimal amount of strain along with some heart rate and calorie information. And then during your activity, when you reach your optimal strain, a little notification will pop up along with a little haptic vibration from the device itself to indicate that you've kind of reached your goal for that day. A couple more notes about strain though. So strain works really well for cardio-based activities like running and cycling where your heart rate is elevated for longer periods of time, but it doesn't work quite as well for stuff like weight training where that's more about muscular strain versus cardiovascular strain. So with weight training activities, your strain score likely won't be all that high because it's generally that your muscles will give out before hitting your maximum heart rate. 
And those kind of activities will also most likely not be automatically recognized. Like here from about 6.20 to 8 p.m., I did some weight training and was hovering around 100 to 110 beats per minute on average during that time, but it didn't flag that as an activity. Oh, and that spike right here is when I was in the sauna. Anyhow, what's really interesting about WHOOP is that it suggests the amount of strain that you should build in a given day based on your recovery. So if we go into the strain tab, it says at the bottom that I was overreaching and that was likely true for the most part. It suggested that I stay at a strain level of 14.5, but I overreached and reached to 17.2. And yeah, I felt it the next day. Now, before we dive into recovery, I also want to move to the second tab with the W on it on the bottom, and this is what they call the coaching tab. And this is where it can give some real-time feedback in regards to strain as well as sleep suggestions. So if we click on the strain coach section right here up top, it shows that same screen we saw before to track an activity manually. What's far more interesting though is the sleep coach, and this is generally based on the sleep I had the night before as well as my accumulated strain for the day. So you can see that it suggests that I go to sleep right now so I can get nine hours of sleep. So I can wake up by 6.30, which is the latest time I chose to wake up. And then you'll also notice this little button that says perform. So if we click on that, it gives you some options here where you can choose what kind of sleep goal that you'd like. So whether to peak, perform, or just get by the next day and adjust your sleep need based on your preference. That's kind of cool. And then at the bottom, you can enable a haptic alarm, which will make the whoop vibrate at either the exact time when I've reached my sleep goal in regards to time or when I reached a green recovery score. Anyhow, at this point I went to bed, so let's move to the next morning to see how it all played out. So here I am the next morning. So it says that I got a 71% recovery score, which I'd say is pretty decent, and I got a total sleep time of seven and a half hours or so. But if you notice, it doesn't necessarily give you a sleep score or anything like that on this screen. But if we back out of there and then go to the sleep tab on the far right hand side, this shows my sleep performance. And this is a little bit different than that sleep efficiency percentage that we saw earlier. So this figure of sleep performance is based on what Whoop suggested in terms of the time and amount of sleep I got on that night versus the time I actually slept. So the sleep data is one thing, but what they tend to highlight a lot more is your recovery score, which you can see on this tab. So even though my sleep performance, as in the amount of time I slept compared to how much they suggested was 82%, my recovery score was only 71%. Now, the reason that these don't necessarily line up is that your recovery score isn't necessarily just your sleep performance. It's based on multiple factors, including your HRV, resting heart rate, respiratory rate, as well as the time slept. And then you can see here that when we flip this card over is that I had a decent HRV, but the rest of my stats weren't as awesome as that night. I kind of had some anxiety that night and was a little bit restless. So my sleep quality wasn't all that amazing, but somehow my recovery score was pretty good. And the reason for this is that they heavily weight HRV into your recovery score. So what that means though, is that you can have a terrible night of sleep and still get a high recovery score. And I have to give them credit that they're very upfront in saying that you can still have a poor night of sleep and still get a high recovery score, but I'm not necessarily sure that equates to how some of us may think of recovery and how we actually feel. And I have some pretty good examples of this here. So here's the night that I got a little bit under five hours of sleep. That is in fact 4 a.m. right here because I had to get up early for some work stuff. So even though I got less than five hours of sleep, it somehow gave me a recovery score of 81%. And the reason for that high recovery score is that I had an optimum HRV. What was more concerning though for me is that it said that I was primed to take on strain for that day and it suggested that an optimum amount of strain for that day would be 13.7, which I'd equate to about an hour to hour and a half workout at a moderate to high intensity. In reality, I just wanted to take a nap, so that's what I did. And then let me show you kind of the opposite scenario. So on this night, I got a ton of sleep and felt amazing that morning, but it only gave me a 63% recovery score, but my HRV wasn't quite as ideal, even though my sleep performance was good and just by feeling, I felt amazing that day. So I definitely think there's some opportunity there for them to tweak their recovery algorithm to better take into account sleep quality because that's the thing is that their sleep tracking is actually really really good they do a really good job at hitting all the data points including the times i go to bed the restless moments in between as well as when i get up and one more thing that i thought was really awesome about their sleep tracking is that it's smart enough to automatically adjust your recovery score in a situation where let's say you get up you feel like crap and then you decide to go back to bed for a little bit and then get up a little bit later so like on this morning i woke up a little bit after 6 a.m and then i started to get on with my day but then I decided to go back to bed for a little bit. Notice though that it already had processed my sleep and provided my recovery score. Well going back to bed was a darn good idea because when I woke back up it was smart enough to automatically detect that and it automatically reprocessed my sleep data and subsequently it changed my recovery score because my sleep performance as well as HRV improved. 
Now, although I feel that there can be some tweaks to the daily feedback, including recovery, I have to say that what Whoop does in terms of collecting all this data and showing you historical trends is pretty amazing. So at the start of every week, they give you a weekly assessment of your last week in regards to trends in strain, recovery, sleep, and all that data that's been collecting. And they also even provide monthly reports with all these trends. It's really good. Okay, so now that we've talked about the entire Whoop concept, let's talk about the actual hardware accuracy because all those concepts are really, really cool and all, but if the hardware isn't accurate, then all that feedback could be meaningless. So I've got a lot of different examples for you in a few different scenarios where I was wearing the Whoop in different places on my body, just to kind of give you an idea of accuracy. So on some of these examples, I was wearing the Whoop on the wrist with no other sensors on the arm, and then comparing that with another optical heart rate sensor, which was gonna be on a watch on my other wrist, and then comparing that with a chest heart rate sensor as well as another optical arm heart rate sensor. And then I also made sure to switch wrist to see if there's gonna be a difference. And then I also have some other examples where I was wearing the Whoop on the bicep strap on one arm and then comparing that with another optical heart rate sensor on the other arm and that's going to be the polar verity sense as well as the polar oh one so let's start with some indoor cycling which i usually use as kind of like a baseline because indoor cycling for me is an activity where i pretty much always get good results out of any heart rate sensor so on this ride here at the beginning of the ride it took about a minute to pick up the rise in heart rate but that can happen with a lot of heart rate sensors so no worries there right down here it dipped a little bit as well as right here there were these two sections right here though where you can see that it kind of lost heart rate and kind of flat lines for a couple of minutes. And just for reference, I was wearing a Garmin Phoenix 7X Solar on my other wrist, which you can see in blue. So here's where you can see in kind of an apples to apples comparison of one wrist-based optical heart rate sensor to another. And then on this right here, I went ahead and switched wrists just to see if the results would be any different. And again, for the most of the workout, it was okay, but we do see those same sort of occurrences where our heart rate dropped out for a few times for about a minute or so each time. Moving on to road riding outside where we can start to introduce more variables like vibrations and bumps in the road, which can throw off these kinds of sensors. Well, it certainly was not as good as you can see. And then there's gonna be some activities that are pretty notorious for posing a lot of challenges for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors. And those are gonna include stuff like mountain biking, weight training, as well as rowing. And we can certainly see that reflected here on this mountain bike ride. However, what I do want to point out is that the line that you see in blue is the Garmin Epix. And although it had some challenges on the tail end of the workout, you can see that over the majority of the ride, it was a bit more accurate. And then for weight training, here's where we can see that the Whoop had a very hard time tracking quicker changes in heart rate, where it basically didn't track a lot of these sets properly. Just for comparison, the line that you see in blue is the Garmin Phoenix 7X Solar. The Phoenix 7 isn't perfect by any means, but it at least tried and it was able to detect those quicker changes in heart rate a little bit better where like here the whoop just kind of was cruising along where the 7x actually detected something and what i have to say about the last two examples is that watches that are generally larger and heavier like the garmin epix as well as the garmin phoenix 7x well they tend to not get as accurate heart rate because they have a tendency of bouncing around on wrist a little bit more which can throw off these types of heart rate sensors the whoop on the other hand well that's a pretty light sensor and it's a pretty light device so i was expecting a little bit more Anyhow, for all you rowers out there, I've got a couple tests for you here too. And here I have the Whoop compared to the Garmin Phoenix 7S, the smallest of the Phoenixes. And this time around for rowing, just like weight training, which can be a challenging activity, well, the results kind of speak for themselves. And then here's another row where I switch wrists just to see if there's gonna be a difference from one wrist to another. So when worn on the wrist, the Whoop 4.0 wasn't really giving me all that accurate results. And I made sure to include some other wrist-based optical heart rate sensors in there just so you can kind of have that comparison as well. But optical heart rate sensors tend to do a lot better when there's a lot more flush. So what I did was I purchased a bicep band so I could actually test it on the arm itself. And then on a lot of these examples, I'll be comparing it directly to the Polar Verity Sense as well as the Polar OH1, which are also optical heart rate sensors, which are also worn on the arm. So the line in orange is the Whoop 4.0 and the line in purple is the Polar OH1 Plus on different arms, of course. And then the line in blue is the Garmin Epix. Overall, not bad results, but unfortunately we still see those similar dropouts from the Whoop though. And then on this ride, I switched arms to see if there's gonna be any difference. However, on this road ride, things weren't bad for the most part. For the majority of the ride, I'd call this very usable heart rate, especially for an outside road ride. We do see again those moments where the heart rate just drops out, especially on the tail end of this ride, but overall, not terrible. And then here's another road ride where I switched arms. So you can see here that the Polar OH1 Plus actually had a couple issues like here and here, but there was much more variance from the Whoop. And then for mountain biking, I was actually pretty pleased with this result. Other than this business at the beginning right here, which I don't really know what was going on, I'd say that for the majority of the ride, it did a pretty good job. And then for an example for running, on the first eight minutes or so, it kind of tracked high, but then it settled in quite nicely. I don't really know what was going on at the beginning though, considering it actually started out very much in line with the other heart rate sensors, but maybe then just got a little bit too excited or something like that. And then again, on this run here, I was quite pleased with the results out of the whoop when worn on the bicep. Very usable results. 
So moving on to some weight training examples, well, on this workout, certainly a lot better on this workout. It still doesn't necessarily provide as much detail, especially on the last five high intensity intervals as I would like to see, but really not bad overall. So in regards to heart rate accuracy in general, it's kind of like the eh department for me. When worn on the wrist, I think it's probably okay for static indoor workouts like indoor cycling, but compared to other wrist-based optical heart rate sensors, I think it's far down to the list. But when worn on the bicep, that improved accuracy quite a bit. So if you want any semblance of heart rate accuracy, I'd probably suggest getting the bicep strap. Now, even though the heart rate accuracy isn't what I'd call amazing by any means, if you're concentrated just on that strain score, I don't think it would actually matter all that much because yes, the dropouts were there. Yes, it wasn't necessarily that accurate in a lot of situations, but those fluctuations, I don't think they'll actually contribute much to a drastic change in your strain score over the day. So now that we talked about all the data that Whoop provides as well as how accurate it is, we need to talk about price. So unlike a lot of other sports tech on the market where you're actually purchasing a device, with Whoop you're actually signing up for a subscription. And with that subscription, the device is included. So if you're a new user and you sign up for a year and pay up front, that'll cost you $300. If you choose to pay month by month, you'll be paying $360 for that year and you are committed for that year. And then there is going to be another longer term plan that'll save you a little bit more money. Now, I think for most of us, when we invest in a piece of sports technology, we expect it to last at least three years before we have to replace it. And that's probably a little bit low. So with Whoop's best value plan, that comes out to $720 for three years. But to get that price, you actually have to sign up for four years. So eventually it'll cost you a little bit more than that. And then for three years on the annual membership, that'll cost you $900. Now, something interesting though about Whoop's subscription model is that when a new device is released, you'll actually get the new device for free without an upgrade fee as long as you're already a subscriber. But one thing to consider though, is that it was about two and a half years between the release of the Whoop 3.0 and the Whoop 4.0. Either way you cut it, you're looking at something like $700 to $900 to get this data for just three years. You can get a pretty expensive sports watch for that kind of money, which may not do exactly what Whoop does, or at least how they present it, but arguably that sports watch probably will do a lot more in the whole scheme of things. Whoop's advantage here, at least for the moment, is that they collect this data and present it to you in a really easy to digest way. With the exception of some of those examples where the feedback wasn't all that ideal, I actually have to say that their feedback overall is pretty actionable. But you have to imagine at some point that other companies will figure this out because other wearables are already collecting similar types of information, it just may not be presented as well. So to get to the question of whether Whoop is worth it, well, I love the concept of strain recovery. Sure, some tweaks could be made to some of the algorithms, but I think for the most part, it does deliver on that front. What doesn't make me feel as warm and fuzzy though is on the hardware front where with the hardware accuracy, I was a lift a little bit disappointed, especially compared to other heart rate sensors worn in similar locations, along with the fact that I'm still having a little bit of a charging issue here too. Whoop is asking a premium price for this as well as commitment. And I was expecting a bit more considering how much this costs. If all the stars aligned and it was delivering everything that was promised, I would have no problems recommending this. I'll be upfront in saying that I'm not a fan of subscription services, but if this costs something like maybe more like $20 a month, I think that's a lot more appropriate. But those are just my thoughts on Whoop, and I definitely want to hear about your experience with Whoop as well. So if you have anything to add to conversation, definitely leave a comment in the comment section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.